Okay. And first, I would like to invite the host, our President of the Republic, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen, to make her remarks. Yes, I'd like to take this opportunity to reiterate the Taiwanese people's warm welcome to Speaker Pelosi and the delegation. Uh, we're grateful for the delegation's visit under such challenging circumstances as a demonstration of unwavering support to the people of Taiwan. The speaker's presence here in Taiwan serves to boost public confidence in the strength of our democracy as a foundation to our partnership with the United States. I told Speaker Pelosi that we are committed to maintaining the status quo across the street. Taiwanese people are pragmatic. We have welcomed many congressional delegations to Taiwan over the years, and the normal practice of friends visiting each other is inherent in our culture of hospitality. Military exercises are unnecessary responses. Taiwan has always been open to constructive dialogue, and we will work with stakeholders to bring about stability and peace in the region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President. And now I'm honored to give the floor to Speaker Pelosi to deliver her remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam, Madam President, for your leadership uh, and for the leadership I gathered here with you today. I'm proud of my delegation. We're almost like one unit, uh, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, the chairman of the veteran, Mr. Meeks, Mr. Takano, chair of Veterans Affairs, vice chair of of foreign, uh, energy and excuse me, ways and means, the, the Trade Committee, uh, Congresswoman Susan Del Bene, a member of the Intelligence Committee, Mr. Christian Murthy, and a member of the Foreign Affairs and Armed Services Committee, Mr. Kim. I say that because when I speak, uh, I, my receiving your kind words as well as this invitation is really received uh, and appreciated by members of Congress. Uh, the, on both sides of the aisle, on both sides of the Capitol, great enthusiasm for the U.S.-Taiwan relationship. Let's just put it in perspective. Over four decades ago, the Taiwan Relations Act was built in building a strong bond between our two countries, advancing our shared interests of governance, economy, and security, while respecting the One China policy. Our solidarity with you is more important than ever as you defend Taiwan and your freedom. Uh, in our bilateral meeting, we discussed key opportunities to deepen our partnership, upholding democracy and human rights and respect for the individual, combating, well, I'll get around to Koma. Three areas that I just mentioned, security, economy, governance. Security, our relationship is a strong one and we discussed how we over can make it stronger and more and up to date. Uh, our an economy, we talk about tr a trade agreement that might be possible and soon. And in governance, uh, among other things, and in governance, I want to salute Taiwan for the leadership you have provided in fighting COVID. Uh, probably one of the highest rates of, of um, uh, vaccination, but also the lowest number of deaths from COVID, a real model for the world. It's about science but it's also about community acceptance of a plan, and that is called leadership. So thank you for that a lesson to all of us. And the, um, so as we deal with um, uh, those three areas, we come here following the president's lead on the, uh, the Indo-Pacific uh, economic framework. That's interesting, we support that. Uh, again, in terms of security, economy, and governance, uh, uh, Taiwan's not a part of that, so we want to build a, 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 a different set with the economic package, with our security package and the trade agreement, hopefully, that is imminent. So this is a very important time for us because we came here to listen and to learn about how we can do this more effectively, really achieving the goals for Taiwan uh, that we all aspire to but don't understand as fully as we do now because of this trip. 
So again, I said, it's a great pride for us today, the first uh, woman speaker in the House, uh, meeting the first woman president of Taiwan. Uh, we have uh, some enthusiasm for that. And again, we're very proud of our representatives, Sandra, Sandra or Sandra Aldkirk, and I'm proud of my colleagues, Susan Delbeni. So it's, they took a moment to take some pride in women's leadership. Again, our delegation came here to send an unequivocal message. America stands with Taiwan. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much, uh, Your Honorable. Right now, with the permission of our um, President and uh, Speaker Pelosi, we'll be taking up uh, questions from the media. So we'll proceed right now taking the first questions uh, from Taiwanese media, and it will be raised uh, by Mr. Joseph Ye from CNA. Joseph? Uh, President Tsai, uh, Madam Speaker, I'm Joe from the Central News Agency. I'm representing more than hundreds of Taiwan's media. I was given one question, so the question will be a little bit long, so please bear with me, because we have waited for 25 years with this chance. <laughs> uh, so you're the first House Speaker to visit Taiwan in 25 years, so do you foresee that your visit will bring up even more similar high senior official U.S. Grant, uh, to visit Taiwan in the future, or maybe future speakers? Uh, this is the first part of my question. And the second part is, uh, in accordance with Taiwan Travel Act, uh, high-level visit are two-way thing. So a lot of uh, U.S. congressmen ha has proposed uh, President Tsai to speak at U.S. Congress, if possible. Do you see that it could realize anytime soon in the near future, especially under your leadership in the House? And the final question is, <laughs> I'm sorry, 25 years again, sorry. The final question is, uh, how do you see how the Chinese welcome you with uh, military exercise and sanctions against Taiwan? Do you foresee that? Thank you. Well, first let me thank you for your questions on behalf of all of those other people. And um, to say that uh, in terms of our visit here and what that lead to other visits, I certainly hope so. But I think it's important to note that pe members of Congress, several of them had made trips just earlier this year. Five senators, bipartisan, came, again, including the chair of the Foreign Relations Committee, Mr. Menendez, came, not too much of a fuss was made. Sen individual senators have made trips or plan to make trips. And uh, I just hope uh, that uh, it's really clear that while China has stood in the way of Taiwan participating and going to certain meetings, that they understand that they will not stand in the way of people coming to Taiwan. It's a show of friendship, of support, but also a source of learning about how we can work together better in collaboration. So, it, yeah, no, I, I don't, I think that, that um, they made a big fuss because I'm speaker, I guess. I don't know if that was a reason or an excuse because they didn't say anything when the men came. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the second part was, uh, the second part was, invited to the U.S. Congress to make Well, that was the third part, but I'll go there. Okay. okay. That was the third part I thought. Uh, we haven't had a joint session in probably three years in Congress, uh, partially because of COVID, but even before that it was Christmas and all that. So we haven't had many uh, joint sessions, but we have tried to accommodate visits uh, by bringing together, um, bringing rather both sides of the aisle and, and both sides of the Capitol. And I would hope that uh, that, that opportunity would be there. Uh, the joint session has become something, again, because of COVID, we can't, we aren't able to. It's even hard for us to do the President's State of the Union address because you have the space and you have the time and, well, you know, here we are. The, uh, I don't know, um, 
Uh, I think that whatever China was going to do, they will do in their own good time. What excuse they may use to do it is another thing. But you really know more about that than I do. Uh, I do think that um, the, uh, it's really important uh, for the message to be clear that in the Congress, House and Senate, Democrats and Republicans are committed to the security of Taiwan in order to have Taiwan be able to most effectively defend themselves. Uh, but it also is about our shared values of democracy and freedom and how Taiwan has been an example to the world in that regard. And um, whether it's certain insecurities on the part of the president of China as to his own political situation that he's rattling a saber, I don't know. But I really, it doesn't really matter. What matters to us is that we salute the successes of Taiwan, we work together for the security of Taiwan, and we just take great lessons from the democracy in China. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Right now, we uh, take questions from the international media, and I would like to invite Samson Ellis. He is the Taipei Bureau Chief of Bloomberg News. Samson? Okay. Oh, thank you. Madam President, Madam Speaker, we have seen the Chinese authorities take multiple economic actions against individual Taiwanese companies and entire sectors of the economy here. Taiwan has already paid a cost for your visit and is likely to continue to do so over the coming days and weeks. What concrete, tangible benefits can you promise Taiwan to offset the cost of your trip? Well, you. at the same time as this trip is taking place and in recognition of our common interest economically, we just passed the Chips and Science Act. Uh, this is something that opens the door for us to, again, have good, better economic exchanges. I know that some Taiwan businesses, significant ones, are already planning to invest in manufacturing in the United States. And uh, the ingenuity, the entrepreneurial spirit, the brain power, <laughs> whatever, uh, the intellectual resource that exists in, in Taiwan and the success of the tech industry here for one, for one, um, one sector uh, has been really uh, a model. And again, we want to increase our relationship. So I think that it, I would be saying we would, that would be a goal we share, but with this CHIPS Act, we're really facilitating reaching uh, that goal. And to, uh, it, it's, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. And I think that you will see um, uh, a uh, recognition of the scientific success uh, that Taiwan has had uh, being a model for how we go forward. That's why our bill is called CHIPS and Science. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Right now, uh, last but not the least, uh, we will have a representative from the Japanese media, Mr. Ishido Koijiro-san. He is the Bureau Chief of Asahi Shimbun of Japan. Hello. Hey, Hello. 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 Thank you very much for taking my questions. My question is about the Chinese democracy. Now we are witnessing the Chinese authorities uh, increasing various pressures not only to Taiwanese people and the Hong Kongese, but to their own citizens, I mean the Chinese people. And uh, as a strong and long-time advocate of democracy, please let us share your ideas how the democratic countries, including South Korea, Japan, where you are heading to, can deter China from invading Taiwan militarily, and how we can guide China toward a democratic political system. Thank you. Well, two things. In the context, your question comes in the context of right now a, a struggle between autocracy and democracy in the world. We cannot back away from that. And so as China goes and uses its soft power, money 
and whatever uh, into many countries in order to get their support at the UN and other bodies, we have to recognize the, that has some effectiveness because it's a lot of money and it's um, promises that may or may not ever be kept. So when we talk about Taiwan in that context, we have to talk from strength. We have to talk from strength. We have to talk from uh, what, China, what Taiwan has been so good about is being technologically advanced, whether it's in business or security. And uh, we have to show the world, and that's one of the purposes of our trip, to show the world the success of the people of Taiwan, their courage, their courage to change their own country to become more democratic, to become more democratic, uh, their respect for people and the rest, and quite frankly, a model in this region in that respect, in those respects. So strength, uh, goodwill, and again, the demonstration of a democracy that has evolved to a stronger place now and it offers a very strong contrast to what's happening on mainland China. No more evidence needed than what happened in Hong Kong under one country, two systems. It didn't happen. But again, we're not here to talk about mainland China. We're here to talk about Taiwan. We have our uh, U.S. Our Taiwan Relations Act, we support the communiques, this, that, and the other thing that have gone before. So we're not, we're, we are supporters of the status quo and the rest. Um, we don't want anything to happen to Taiwan by force. So strength, and, and one of the biggest sources of strength is democracy. I said at a meeting earlier with the parliamentarians, in our earliest days of our founding of our country, Benjamin Franklin our presidency said, freedom and democracy. Freedom and democracy, and one thing, security here. If we don't have, we can't have either if we don't have both. So, security, economics, eco security, economy, and again, they're all, and governance, they're all related, and we want Taiwan to always have freedom with security, and we're not backing away from that. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen. Today's event is especially important because we are witnessing the historical visit of Speaker Pelosi to Taiwan to convey the message of the U.S. support to Taiwan. So we know, in a challenging time like this, Taiwan is not alone. We also would like to thank very specially to President Tsai Ing-wen for her leadership, her resilience, strength, and wisdom show in leading Taiwan. Also, our sincere appreciation goes to the distinguished members of the U.S. Congress who accompany Speaker Pelosi in her trip. And your friendship means a lot to us. Thank you so much for being here in Taiwan. Also, thanks for the presence of so many officials from uh, the U.S. side, from the Taiwan side, whose effort made this event possible. Thank you also very much to the media friends with us today, and also hundreds right now watching the live transmission. Thank you very much to you all. Have a great day.